If you like what we do here at Full Fat Videos and you'd like to ask us questions directly, suggest new video topics, or hear our thoughts on the latest pop culture info nuggets, you can follow us on Twitter at Full Fat Videos. We're in a golden age of animation, so we're told. Shows such as Bojack Horseman, The Midnight Gospel, and for better or worse, Rick and Morty, have been softly pushing the medium of the adult animated sitcom, a genre which seemed at one point to be concerned solely with knockoffs of either The Simpsons and South Park. These shows are setting new standards for what animation can be, and if there's one platform that's leading the charge in this revival, it's probably Netflix. It seems like Netflix is churning out animated sitcoms at an unprecedented rate at the moment, many of which are not only garnering dedicated and enthusiastic fan bases, but which are also critical darlings. Enter recent show Hoops, created by musical comedian Ben Hoffman and centred on an angry, foul-mouthed high school basketball coach played by Jake Johnson. And let me just say, this Hoops is, uh, it's bad. It's like really, really bad. So bad it makes shows like the much maligned Paradise PD seem like Bojack Horseman. Hoops made me sad, not just at its appalling quality, but also for what it says about the future of adult animation on the platform. Let me explain. First off, I originally wanted to make this video one of those deep dives into the why of hoops. A cursory watch makes it very apparent that it's bad. But I hate those kinds of videos that just dunk on something without having a broader point behind it. What always intrigued me is the why behind bad art. The things in a piece of media's construction that sow the seeds for it to either succeed or fail. And yet with hoops, these building blocks are incredibly generic. It's the same shoddy animation style, poorly developed characters and raunchy for the sake of raunchy humour that made Paradise PD so unbearable. Our main character, Ben Hopkins, is distinctly unlikable. He doesn't really have any features that endear us towards him. His life just piles on misery after misery, like his wife leaving him for his best friend. And I've been very cool about you dating my wife, so I'd appreciate it if you were cool about me texting her when I'm up lonely on sleeping pills. His dad being an abusive jerk. I'd love to help a coach out, but I don't see one here. <laughs> and being arrested for soliciting prostitution for a minor. All I told him was he gave me 500 bucks to have sex with a kid. You'll regret this, buddy. And how does Ben react to this? Ah, uh, he just swears and says offensive things because that's the joke, right? I'm so grateful that nobody fucked me in there. Sure, my ego's hurt a little, but nonetheless, thank you, God. This is the lowest of the low. The lowest I've been since that time, nobody tried to buttfuck me in prison a couple hours ago. What's more, the show has that terrible animation style that seems to be prevalent in so many adult animated sitcoms at the moment. Like seriously, why does every character in these shows look like a background character from Rick and Morty? But at the same time, there's really nothing unique about Hoop's low quality. It really is just one of a long string of sitcoms that thinks cramming in lots of swearing, gross out scenes, and so-called edgy humour is enough of a qualifier to classify something as adult animation. So really, why am I making a video about it? If it's just some bad animated sitcom, then does it really warrant further discussion? Netflix offers an unprecedented amount of content within its subscription service. That's inescapable. The sheer mass of shows and movies cluttering its database would take years to watch, but to say that the platform's biggest successes are simply democratisation of taste, that these shows are being watched the most because people have sifted through everything and they're the best Netflix has to offer, would be misleading. Because in the world of Netflix, the algorithm is of course king. Netflix, like all other online platforms, gathers data on its users' habits to serve them content that is better suited to their taste. Netflix looks at a plethora of factors when designing its users' experience. They look at watch time, what you've watched previously, what you typically watch after watching another show, how long you spend on Netflix, how much you revisit your favourite shows and movies. The platform is constantly gathering data on you as you use it, adapting your experience so that you're never short of something to watch. I mean, just look at all the different thumbs they use to tempt you into watching their shows based on your other watch habits. What this amounts to is that Netflix categorises you. Netflix has thousands of subgroups that they use to display content and as a person continues to watch more stuff, they're categorised into these groups and served programmes based on other users who also fit into that same collective. Every piece of programming on Netflix is labelled using keywords which help viewers find their way to similar shows. You've probably seen these on the platform. They're those three descriptors you see at the bottom of shows and they're used to track viewer watch habits. Like, say you watch a few shows that have the keyword raunchy. Well, Netflix is going to keep serving you more raunchy content until it's clogging up your feed. All this means that the keywords placed under videos are a huge part of their success. But what does this have to do with, well, this? I need a man to make me feel pretty, to lick on my puff, crap off his nuts, and suck on my titties. Let's 
Let's look at the metadata behind Hoops. In its listing on Netflix, Hoops is described as three things. Raunchy, quirky, and witty. Like the porn star said at the gangbang, keep the meat coming. Yep, I'm as surprised as you. But anyway, these are the three keywords that Netflix chooses to categorize the show by, so let's just go with it. A cursory glance at some of Netflix's most popular animated sitcoms shows that Hoops is better positioned within the platform as a potential heavy hitter for Netflix. It shares the exact same algorithmic composition of animated smash hit Big Mouth, and on a tag-by-tag -tag basis, has something in common with nearly every single animated sitcom on the platform. Its near-perfect algorithmic match to Big Mouth means that you're almost guaranteed to run into it if you're a fan of that show. And whilst Big Mouth, despite the controversy, is constantly giving us mature insights into our experiences of adolescence and puberty, Hoops is giving us this. You're telling me that fucking is twice as much as a blowjob? Fucking? Most of the time with fucking, you just gotta lay there. It's the blowjob you do all your heavy lifting. The two shows aren't actually that similar, but Netflix's algorithm is likely to push hoops at you if you watch any of their animated sitcoms. Let's compare this to something like, say, Tuca and Bertie, a critically acclaimed Netflix original which is categorised as absurd, raunchy, and quirky. Tuka and Bertie's cancellation after a single season shocked its fan base, given the show had won plaudits for its nuanced and realistic depiction of issues such as sexual assault, drug abuse, and depression. And yet the show failed to garner an audience, in part due to a seeming issue with Netflix's categorization system, with creator Lisa Hannawalt noting on Twitter that even she had struggled to find Tuka and Bertie on the streaming service. As production designer on BoJack Horseman, Lisa's series shares a lot in common with the show, both being brightly coloured and surreal animated sitcoms that are uncompromising in their approach to controversial subject matter. And also, like, they're all animals, right? <laughs> and yet, looking at the metadata for both shows, they're sorted completely differently. In fact, Tuca and Bertie seems to be categorised closest to South Park and Rick and Morty, shows that aren't really that similar at all. Tuca and Bertie has a lot more in common with BoJack and The Midnight Gospel, and yet these shows have next to no crossover on the platform. In contrast, their categorization of hoops means that it can be located via nearly every possible animated sitcom and comedy on the platform. That's a lot. Essentially, if you're watching an animated comedy, you're going to run into hoops, but might miss Tuca and Bertie, which is a crying shame. This, to some degree, explains why Hoops was trending in the UK for nearly three weeks and has since been a prominent feature of many of Netflix's lists. Its success, in spite of its quality, is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Netflix has categorised it so well and promoted it enough that its success will be almost inevitable. It's the same reason that garbage like Paradise PD was renewed for a second season, and it concerns me with regards to Netflix's future animated endeavours. To reiterate, Hoops is awful. It's puerile, has next to no character development, and seems to emphasise shock over humour. And yet, it's likely the show that will be renewed for another series, in part because of how well categorised it is. Netflix's reliance on a feedback loop for its users has of course resulted in some of the last decade's best shows, but at the same time, the success of these awful animated shows on the platform, like Hoops, like Paradise PD, makes me question why Netflix wouldn't bother to make a chance on something more experimental, more challenging. To me, this is the same problem with a studio like Illumination. People are always saying that animation is cheap, the stories they tell cliché, and yet these films mop up at the box office. So what reason would Illumination have to reevaluate their movie to the quality of, say, Pixar. Well, old Pixar, not churning out sequels by the dozen Pixar, you know, you know what I'm saying. But the cinema and television do offer us the ability to stumble upon something, for word of mouth to be generated, whereas Netflix's algorithmic approach to content means that unless you literally seek something out through prior knowledge, you're unlikely to stumble upon anything unfamiliar in your recommendations. Netflix seems to be stumbling upon a formula by which cheap, poorly scripted animated shows can find life on the platform as long as they've got a successful comedian or actor attached to them. And I worry that the future of Netflix animation will see us have less Tuca and Berties and more shows like Hoops. Okay, so we have not one, not two, not three, no three, sorry. We have three video essays on the boys for you. There's only one catch you can't find any of them on Full Fat Videos. We've collaborated with Amazon Prime Video to create three bespoke essays on key members of the seven. Homelander, Starlight, and the A-Train, baby. A-Train, baby! We got asked to do this a little while ago now, and we've been very excited to get these out, and uh, 
yeah, I hope you really enjoy them. The first video is all about the many masks of Homelander, how his performative nature is dictated by his relationships to Stillwell, to the Seven, to his fictional parents, and then to humanity. We dig into the series to try and uncover the person he really is, breaking down all the ways the Star Spangled Hero differs from the characters he pastiches, predominantly Superman. And we touch upon everything from Tarantino to Marv Wolfman to Injustice. Starlight, the myth of the superhero, is all about how, in a cynical world such as The Boys, the defender of Des Moines goes against the grain. Through Annie January, we explore the commercial nature of the superhero game and why she could become the show's key player in the fight against Fort. Like the good captain, Annie January's perspective and morality is challenged by an ever-changing world and it is her resistance and will that keeps her a true hero. A Train in the Pitfalls of the Celebrity Athlete is all about the, uh, well, the pitfalls of the celebrity athlete. In a world of other speedsters, you can never be the world's fastest man for long, and in this video we explore how the character is much more in line with that of a professional athlete than a superhero, and how that obsession for success is slowly but surely destroying his life. I hope you enjoy them, and I would really appreciate if you left a comment on the videos, left a like and all that jazz, only if you enjoy them of course. It would be great to cover the rest of the seven and maybe even the boys at some point, but I imagine that would be dependent on how these videos do. We couldn't have been happier to get asked, and to be honest it's been really enjoyable. Chris and I both genuinely enjoy the show, so getting the chance to talk about it was a joy. And just before I go, I would like to say thank you. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and allowing us to have the opportunity to make these videos. We very much couldn't get anywhere without an audience. You guys. You are the real heroes. Thank you for watching another full fat video. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit the bell if you'd like to see more breakdowns of movies, TV and more. A big thank you to our full fat tier patrons, Dr. Chike, Jax Merrick and Mike Nandu. You the boys. Until next time, keep it full fat.